Batteries! Batteries, we've all been there now. If you're looking at batteries, batteries, and how to store them. Now these are all these are all for sale at SOSEliquid.com. The Sony VTC4s. I have a few VTC5s left. Um, I was hesitant on selling them. I still am because they don't make them anymore. Um, so I was thinking about putting it in my devices, but we'll see. These are all stored right now. They're not in use. They're brand new. And how to store your lithium-ion batteries is what this video is all about. So um, no matter what batteries they are, whether it's the any kind of ICR, and also lithium-ion cell, and um, even IMR, they need to be stored in a certain way. Um, so that you don't ruin the batteries, right? And because these are for sale at SOSEliquid.com in a storage room, right? I have a whole bunch of batteries. Um, they have to be stored in a certain way. They can't just be, like, uh, left there, or else you're going to ruin the battery. That's how you do it. Um, unlike lead-acid batteries, where lead-acid has to be at full charge all the freaking time for it to be safe. Um, not safe, but hold its capacity. Lithium ions actually only have should only be at 40 to 50 percent charge when they're stored. When they're stored. So what I do is when I get these batteries in, I check the voltage. Now the kind of um, resting voltage is is where you need to be, right? The the state of charge is what they call it, right? The SOC. Um, the resting voltage should be at about 3.75, and that's about 40 to 50 percent charge. So these lithium ion cells should be at 40 to 50 percent charge if you're going to store it for a long period of time uh, for it to hold its capacity for the battery health to be good. So when I do get these in from the manufacturers I, or wholesalers or whatever, I check all the voltages, I charge them up to 3.8, and then I let it sit for a good few hours and I check the voltage and as long as it kind of as long as the state of charge kind of goes down to about 3.375 and hangs there until that happens I don't put it in storage so um, for you guys that have lots and lots of batteries like I have lots and lots of batteries that I, I interchange but um I have interchange batteries where I always keep in charge because I always use them and then I have batteries that I don't really quite use that often, um, like the Samsung ICR batteries or even EFS batteries. They don't get charged all that often. They're used all that often, and all the batteries that I have for sale are all in storage. So how do you store these? Um, like I said, I, I told you how I did it. I checked the charge. I charge them up to 3.8 ish. I let it kind of settle down because with lithium-ion battery cells, what happens is you supply a constant voltage. What's that mean? It's just, it's not trickle charging. You're just supplying steady voltage for that, for the inside of that lithium ion to soak up all the, all the goodness, right? And the thing is, when you first charge your battery, have it at 4.2, charge your charge up to 4.2, it's okay up to 4.3, but 4.2 is where it's fully charged, right? Um, it's 4.2, you take it off the charger and you test it battery states that it's 4.2 but you wait maybe a day and you test it again it's going to drop down to 4 maybe 3.9 why is this you're not losing the charge what's happening is um, the internals are not are not soaking up all the electricity the charge all the way that's why people say um, charge charge your batteries at a lower current um, it's better for the battery not really it's not better really, because you can charge it at two three amps and get it over with within like freaking minutes right not minutes mm -hmm. three thousand milliamps so you get it if you get like a two thousand milliamp battery you get it done within like 45 minutes right ish ish is it 166 no somewhere around there right 40 minutes 40 minutes ish um but that charge is not going to be as well charged as something where you could just charge it at 500 milliamps. Why? Because at 500 milliamps, instead, you're still giving it a constant 4.2 volts, but you're giving it more time for the internal to soak up all the electricity to get it to 4.2 volts. Rather, as if you charge it at 2 amps or 2,000 milliamps, um, you're charging it really quick. You're getting the voltage up. Once you pop it off, 
inside hasn't soaked up all the electricity yet, and then that's why it kind of settles down to your state of charge, your kind of hanging voltage. And that's why people say always charge your batteries at a lower current if you can. Um, I have three chargers. Two of the chargers are set at 500 milliamps. The other two, uh, the one charger is set at one, one amp or 1,000 milliamps. Um, that's just because if I need to charge it really quick, I'd rather charge it at the one amp and just deal with it. But for the most part, I use 500 milliamp chargers. Um, so if you charge it at, at higher current, it'll get to 4.2, but then again, your state of charge will be lower. So for you to store these batteries, um, charge it with a lower current, like even at 320, 320 is good, 420, 500 milliamp uh, charger. Charge it up to about halfway, 3.8, pop it off, give it an hour, test it. If it's anywhere between 3.7 and 3.8, you're good to store the battery. The battery is stored for a year, years really. Um, and it should be, it should be okay. Although you should check it early to check the voltage. Um, because you really, you don't want to store batteries too long, right? So that is how you store lithium ion batteries. Now I have a treat for you coming up in future videos. What I did was I ordered a shit ton of laptop batteries. And um, I only ordered these not to use in my electronic cigarettes because not, you know, not to use my electronic cigarettes, but because I wanted to use them in an electrical bicycle. Um, the reason why I haven't been posting videos is because I was building an electric bicycle. Currently, I ordered lead acid batteries, um, just because they're more economical. I thought, I thought they would be more economical, but it turns out that if I buy a shit ton of laptop batteries, they're half the price of a lead acid. So I ended up s spending double the amount of money that I wanted to spend. But, but, um, yeah, I built an electronic 1000 watt hub motor, brushless hub motor. Um, electric bicycle. I bet that in like 30 minutes. It didn't take me that long. But the power source is what's taking me forever. I ordered that acid batteries. They haven't come yet. I got a trickle charger for 48 volts. Um, but then I also got a shit ton of laptop batteries. And these are supposed to be 18650 cell guys. So when I get them in, I'll probably pop them off and then I might take one apart and see how it vapes. Depending on what it is. Alright, if, if it can't handle the current, then I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, you know, abuse it too much, but that is a viable option. So when I do get these batteries in, I'll go ahead and take it apart. I'll show you on camera, see if they're actually, you know, usable for, for vaping needs. And then, um, I'm not going to do a electronic bicycle video because this is an e-cigarette kind of channel, right? I might, I might, I might show you my electronic bicycle while I vape or something. But that's kind of exciting. So, for those of you that are thinking about storing your 18650 cells, make sure that it's at about 40 to 50 percent charge, and then you can store them safely. You do not want to charge them up all the way, or you do not want to drain them all the way, and put it away in storage. So that's just um, just a little heads up. All right, I babbled a little bit too long here, but hopefully you got something out of this. And uh, thank you for watching. Please subscribe, and thank you to all my new subscribers.